Welcome back. In the previous video, we learned how to preload data and code using the data swell kit preload data attribute. You can set it to hover, tap, or off. Preloading can be great from a UX point of view as the next route instantly loads for a user. Although that is great, it is not desirable in every scenario. If you have data that updates often, preloading on hover can lead to stale data if the user decides to navigate after a few seconds. You can fall back to tap to ensure staleness is addressed, but there is a middle ground. And that is to preload code, but not data. Let's understand what I mean by that. I'm going to remove the attribute on the body tag. And in the home page, I'm going to set preload data to hover for the products link. If I now head back to the browser and hover over the link, you can see data, which is the double underscore data.json file, and code, which is the page and layout files, are both downloaded. To avoid data staleness, what we can do is load only the page and layout code, but not the data. And we do that using the data swell kit preload code attribute. Back in VS Code, we change data to code. So data swell kit preload code, not data, but code. Save the file. And if I now head back to the browser, refresh, and hover over the products link, we can see page and layout, but not the data JSON file. When I click on the link, only the data is fetched, which will now not be stale. This data, along with the preloaded code, is used to build the UI. Hopefully, the preload code attribute makes sense. Now, what are the possible values? Well, similar to preload data, preload code also supports hover and tap. I want you to quickly pause for a minute and try using the value of tap. It is similar to what we've seen in the previous video. Let me know in the comments if it worked as you expected. Apart from hover and tap, there are two more values supported. The first one is eager. With eager, links will be preloaded straight away without you having to hover or click. If I save the file, head back to the browser and refresh, we should be able to find the products code. Product swelled, for example, which is part of the next page. The second value is viewport. As the name indicates, Links will be preloaded once they enter the viewport. I'm going to add some CSS to ensure product's link is not in the viewport on page load. So on the h1 tag, class is equal to tall. And in the style section, for the tall class, height set to 100 viewport height. Let's save the file and head to the browser. Refresh and clear the network tab. Now let's slowly scroll down to bring the products link into the viewport. You can see the code is now requested. It is very important to keep in mind that preloading code is a prerequisite for preloading data. This attribute will only have an effect if it specifies a more eager value than any data swell kit preload data attribute. Preload data set to hover or tap will automatically imply preload code also set to hover or tap. The value you want to use always depends on your requirements, but hopefully you understood the attribute well enough to make that call. All right, thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.